In this presentation, I'm going to briefly outline uh, the 12 different components that make up strand one of the ITGS triangle. Now, it's this section here that we're looking at, the social and ethical significance um, of the different scenarios and articles that you'll study uh, during uh, the ITGS course. The first one is reliability and integrity. Now, reliability refers to how well a computer system works. Does it function as intended or does it fail and crash every time we try and use it? On the other hand, integrity refers to the correctness of data within the system. Now, data can lack integrity if it's incomplete, if it's out of date, or if it's been deliberately or accidentally changed. Second one is security. Now this concerns the protecting of IT systems from unauthorized users. Now we can use security measures such as passwords, firewalls and locks to restrict access to machines and the network. Number three is privacy and anonymity. Now privacy is the ability to control how data about us is used. Now this can include deciding who we give our data to, how we share our data, how long the data is stored and how the data is used. Now, IT makes covert data collection relatively easy and large database of information can reveal a lot of information about us. But if someone does manage to hide their identity and create total privacy, they can become anonymous. Now, this anonymity can have positive and negative repercussions. Number four is intellectual property and this refers to creations of the mind. This can include things like photographs, films, essays and artworks. Now copyright law has been designed to protect intellectual property from unauthorized reproduction. But we all know that modern IT makes breaking copyright laws um, by providing ways to both copy um, and distribute data uh, fairly easy with little fear of actually getting caught. Number five is authenticity, and this involves a user proving their identity to gain access to a computer system. Now, the most common form of authentication is usernames and passwords to log into a computer system. But things are becoming a little bit more complex now with biometric authentication using things like fingerprints or retinal scans. This is becoming more and more common. Number six is the digital divide. Um, and equality of access. Now, IT hasn't developed uh, at the same rate for everybody in all parts of the world. Uh, in fact, even within a country or within a city, there are certain groups of people that have access to a lot of technology, whilst others are relatively short of technology. Um, either they can't afford it, and even if they can afford it, um, it's very difficult for them to maintain. Um, now, this uh, difference in uh, technology can cause a digital divide between the IT rich and the IT poor. And then this can have consequences in terms of what opportunities are available to these groups of people in the future. Number seven is surveillance. And this involves using IT to monitor people. And this can be with or without their knowledge or permission. Uh, now surveillance can be carried out by governments, law enforcements, by schools, um, by the police, um, for lots of different reasons. Um, now, surveillance is quite often closely tied to the issue of privacy, um, especially when it's performed without the prior consent or knowledge of the people uh, who are under surveillance. Number eight is globalization and cultural diversity. Now, IT has helped to reduce global boundaries and speed up the spread of news and culture. Um, this has become especially true in recent years with the rapid spread of the internet to the most remote parts of the world. Now this can have its benefits obviously but this can also cause problems such as the erosion of traditional cultures, of traditional values and even languages. Number nine are policies and these are a set of rules designed to control the way uh, people or a group of people use IT. Now policies can be designed by individuals, by schools, by businesses uh, or in the form of laws created by governments. Now the fast pace of IT has meant that policies often lag behind reality um, and developments allow new ways to use and abuse information technology um, come about um, before they can actually be regulated. 
Okay, number 10 is standards and protocols. And these are the technical rules that designers of hardware and software should follow. Um, now, this is quite important um, because without standards, compatibility between uh, hardware and software can be very, very difficult. Number 11 is people and machines, and this concerns the way humans actually interact with IT. This can be both physical interaction through interfaces or our psychological response to IT. Now, many people trust computers intrinsically, and this can have huge consequences when they fail. Um, at the extreme, people can become so reliant on IT um, that they are actually addicted, um, and they rely on decision-making to be done by technology even when it can actually be done by a human being and a human being may be, may be better placed to make the decision. Okay, last but not least, number 12 is digital citizenship. And this involves being a good citizen in the digital world. Um, it's about using IT ethically in a way that doesn't harm others, um, it doesn't harm uh, the hardware or software and it it's about using IT in a way that respects the law, for example, copyright, and in a way that doesn't expose yourself or others to danger.